All right, Shalom. Uh, real briefly, I wanted to make this video. Um, it came into my mind and stayed on my heart after talking with a relative recently on pursuing whatever ambition they had and stuff like that. Of course, you know, we operate in righteousness and obedience to the Most High. But we also have a job to do. I shouldn't say but. In addition to that, we also have a job to do. Um, and a lot of us have many talents, gifted with several different abilities. Um, and we need to use those things for the benefit of the kingdom. It can't just be about going out and making money and obtaining this and that and stuff like that. We should have some type of goal that we are pursuing for righteousness in the community, like to use our gift for righteous works in our communities. And let me just briefly read the parable of the talents because um, concerning the one servant who was given the one talent and did nothing with it, that really was what stuck like out to me and came to my remembrance because I wasn't reading the scriptures at the time. But when we were speaking on upcoming projects and things like that and the work and the time and the effort it takes to put into that, um, I, it reminded me and like kind of kept me focused to not be slothful, but be diligent in accomplishing the task. And not just that, but the other things I could be doing or should be doing, you know, that I should be prayerful about to maximize and redeem the time that we have left because we know time is short and we all, you know, have our parts to play. We have our roles to play. So we just should be diligent about that. And real quick. It's in Matthew 25, starting in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered them unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several abilities. So basically, that part is letting you know, it's like a um, confirmation or reiteration of the fact that uh, the things that we're given is within our reach it's within our grasp it's tangible it's not something that's an impossible dream or something like that and i'm not talking about being a movie star or being famous or being whatever like if you want to sing or you know do whatever do it for the kingdom, you know, we do so much for the world. We spend so much time doing stuff for the world. We go out here and get these jobs and run around and do all this stuff. We also should be doing stuff for the most high, um, to edify the body. But I'm not going to go off on a tangent. I'm going to keep reading scripture. So back at verse 15, um, to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he had an increase to that. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh. And reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and bought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful of a few things. I will make thee ruler 
over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Then his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant, that has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gather where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, there thou hast that is thine. He, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. Then at my coming, I should receive my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath 10 talents. For unto everyone, that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's a glare in these glasses, so I'm not going to keep those on. But we see what happened when... The Most High gave us something. And, you know, talents today, because this is a parable, can represent many different things. It can be money, and you use that money, um, and you invest it wisely. And you be prayerful about how you invest that money or whatever it is. And you turn forth a profit and use that for something profitable for the kingdom. You should have something to show based on what you're given. You know, and for a lot of people, that talent is not money per se, but it can be an actual talent. It can be an actual skill, an actual gifting. And how you multiply that gifting could be you have the gift of um knowledge of agriculture, you know how to grow things and stuff like that. You can grow food, you can, you know, sell it, um, feed people, stuff like that. Uh, you know, all for the benefit of the kingdom, if you know how to sew, you can, you know, make garments and even more than that, thinking outside the box of just, oh, I'm going to start a business, I'm going to go ahead and make garments, I'm going to go ahead and you know, sell them and stuff like that. There may be a sister who struggles in this area and has a need to learn that. You go ahead and you teach her. You, you know, giving this skill to her house now and it's going to benefit her. It does benefit the kingdom because that's a skill she can teach her children, not just women. So, you know, men know how to sew as well. It's good to at least know how to tack something or, you know, do a quick stitch or something to repair your clothes. Um, for sisters who can't cook, you can teach them how to cook. You know, you know somebody who is not kitchen <laughs> acclimated, you know, help them. Um, even dietary stuff, um, eating healthier. It's so many different levels you can jump on and use whatever knowledge you have, whatever skill you have to bring forth increase for the betterment of the kingdom. But with that one person who just had one talent, they had, were given one thing to turn profit with. And we can't be stuck in a worldly mentality with profit and Rich and wealth is only this paper fake money, okay? Because knowledge is wealth. Wisdom is wealth. Understanding is 
being rich, you know, know how to apply these scriptures. If you, you know, I don't want to say tutor, but, you know, study with someone and help them to understand more and expound more to them concerning the things of the Bible and things like that. And it doesn't have to be on some super mega scale. You start with one person, whatever they have, they, we can't have these things and just hold it up for ourselves and let it die with us, you know? We're recovering from that because there's a lot of things our ancestors know that was not brought down, you know, into the knowledge of our people today, but we're going back, returning back to our original way and our original culture. And so we have to make sure that we are these servants who are being doing our part and being profitable with the things that are given to us from the most high. You know, he called it wicked and slothful servant to the person who's given one thing according to their ability. And some people figure, oh, I'm only good at one thing. We're not talking about being perfect by somebody else's standards. You know, we're talking about being able to do it to, at a proficient level. You, you don't have to be the master of something to go and teach somebody how to do it. If you have the basic knowledge of something, you can share that basic knowledge. A lot of times we wait until we've mastered something. And I'm not saying just jump out there and do something crazy. Always use wisdom. Always use discernment. But if you have basic knowledge of something and you've mastered that basic knowledge, you can teach somebody that basic thing. And don't think of basic as negative because I know these days basic has um, negative condensation. But entry level, if we want to be caught up in semantics and wordplay and stuff like that. You have an entry-level knowledge. You share your entry-level knowledge and then you work to grow. You know, work to get higher knowledge of what you do have. But whatever you do, do it as unto the most high. Do it with joy in your heart. Don't do it begrudgingly. And let's not be selfish with what we obtain and what we have. Let's just keep pushing forward and... We have to come together and push forward because it can't always be individualites out here doing our own things and not coming together. That's not how you build. You know, you got five talents. You got five areas you gifted in. Pray, ask the most how to help you manifest, increase to build the kingdom in all those areas and ask for help, you know, and most high willing, he'll send you the help and you can do great things, you know. A lot of times we have gifts and things we can share. We can collaborate together. You reach more people, you get more done, you know, and the time, you get to maximize the time that you have, you get so much more accomplished when you have more than one person uh, working towards the same goal. So that's why we have to be like-minded and on one accord. Can two work together except they agree, you know? So I'm done with this particular video. Just wanted to talk about the hidden talents in Israel. I know it's a lot of people who are really talented with a lot of things and they sit on those things. They don't do anything with those things. And a lot of times it's stuff we're passionate about. You have that passion in you for a reason. So go do those things. Pray about it. Fast about it. You know, and then get to work because it's time to put our hand to the plow. All right. Until next video. Shalom.